All right, so today's the first episode of the actual process where we're going to show you guys how to actually quarantine the fish. 80% of the work, 20% of the effort. Why 80-20? Because we want 80% of the results of quarantine for just 20% of the effort. So if this is your very first time quarantining your fish, we're speaking directly to you. So this is going to be a three-phase approach. Today's day one. It's going to cover ick and velvet, specifically velvet. Uh, it's going to have the largest amount of reward for the least amount of effort. Velvet is the thing that will take over the tank the most oh, virulently, yeah. uh, kill the most things, and it's also one of the easiest to beat. Phase two addresses your Nema and Brook, which can actually be uh, much harder to deal with. It uh, has a little bit more variables and stuff in it. What about phase three? Phase three, we're going to be looking at flukes, both body and gill flukes. Uh, we're going to show you how to treat it, and it'll actually be very, very easy. Okay. And if you get all three of these done together, Really, we will have solved 80% or probably greater than 80% of all the types of parasites that the average reefer would run into with just 20% of the effort. So there's obviously a million ways to QT successfully. The protocols we're gonna show you today, or at least in this series, they're actually based off of the ones that we do at Marine Collectors. These fundamentals we've been using for years now, we know them to work really, really well. Uh, we've also made it as simple as possible so you can do it at home. Yeah, note the uh, uh, subtle difference in there. Uh, <laughs> the Marine Collectors protocol is a little bit more advanced to this and what they do at Marine Collectors. We've actually honed it down based on those fundamentals for the 80-20 QT built around these priorities. Number one, it needs to be easy and effective because uh, easy means that you'll actually do it. Uh, and uh, easy and effective is actually number two. Might sound redundant, but easy also means that there's very few ways that this can go wrong. And number three, most important, is it's all based around not just the fish that you're putting in there, but actually protecting all the fish that you already have. There are two caveats to this that everybody should know. They're just real, starting with. Yeah, so, you know, not every fish is going to make it through QT. Not every fish is going to be in the same condition when it comes in. Um, you know, a couple fish might not make it, but the vast majority of them, if they're healthy to begin with, they're probably 99% of the time gonna make it through. If they're unhealthy and they have existing symptoms, you probably still have a better than 50% shot of saving that fish. That's one of those things that uh, it's like a misconception. Uh, if I QT'd and my fish died in QT, was it QT that killed it? No, it's probably unhealthy to begin with. And so you actually increase the odds, but it's still lost, right? Uh, and to be honest, sometimes a lot of people who have that experience actually QT'd improperly, did it in a really complex way that isn't going to be as easy and as successful as this. But you do need to have reasonable expectations. Most fish will make it through, but not all. And the second one is, the second caveat, is this doesn't apply to every last fish out there. Mm -hmm. uh, you do need to do a quick Google and make yeah. sure that the fish you're doing will tolerate uh, meds like copper. Definitely do your research. Some fish are a lot more sensitive than others, like fairy wrasses, flasher wrasses, for example. You're going to want to ramp the medications up in most cases specifically for those. Um, so definitely do a little bit of research you know, before you start doing the actual QT to that fish. You'll actually get some of those tips on that today. All right, getting right to it. Uh, first thing you need is a tank to do this in, uh, and it's probably between 10 and a 40 gallon breeder. Yeah, so obviously, you know, you're gonna wanna size the uh, QT tank, depending on what you're putting in there. If you've got one fish, you know, two fish that are on the smaller side, three inches or under maybe, 10 gallons should be more than adequate. Um, if you're doing like a tang gang, for example, you're probably gonna want something a little bit larger, or if you're doing larger fish, um, you want to definitely have a bigger tank size just so you're getting that water dilution so that they're not making it overly um, polluted before you actually get them out of QT. This is a case uh, where 10 gallon is a lot easier to maintain. And you're gonna see that actually when you see how we're gonna do the water changes that uh, uh, a 10 gallon is actually perfect for this if the fish actually fit in it. Uh, but a 40 gallon breeder, you could go all the way up to that for those tang gangs, but note that uh, the maintenance of this whole thing is gonna go up. All right, so what goes into a QT tank? All right, so we kept it really, really simple. Uh, if you'll notice, we have an air stone, we have a PVC hide, there's a heater and a thermometer. That's really gonna be it. Um, we have an ammonia badge just in case. We're gonna be changing a lot of water very frequently. So we're not too worried about it, but if you're doing a lot of fish together, if you're doing larger fish that maybe you're feeding a lot, um, it's a good backup tool just to keep an eye on it. One of the things that's notably absent here is a uh, biological filtration or that type of filter. Yeah, so the way that we're gonna be running this QT, we're gonna be doing a lot of water changes. So biological is not really necessary. Um, if you've got really big fish, or you have a lot of fish in there, you're doing a bigger QT, um, or you're feeding really heavy, or maybe it's just a fish that's really, really sensitive and you wanna make sure that the water parameter is staying optimal at all times. 
Um, you definitely can, just don't use any type of media that will um, absorb medications, i.e. that would be live sand, rock. Uh, my personal recommendation, use bio balls or plastic, throw them in your overflow, throw them in your sump, throw them you know, just into your actual uh, display tank. Um, the idea is that you're trying to accumulate some of that nitrifying bacteria on there so that you can actually put them into the QT um, to actually absorb and process the ammonia. Um, you can throw them directly into the QT and just let them float. Uh, you can do it in a hang on the back filter, um, or if it's a larger QT and it's plumbed, you can run them in a sump as well. So I think the important part to note here is a uh, bio ball seems to be the winner. If you wanted to add uh, the uh, biological filtration, probably a good place to do that is go right now, get some bio balls, throw them in a the little baffle area between mm -hmm. your sump, they'll stay in there and then they'll be ready when you need to use them. But the point here is actually that a lot of people haven't done that before. They bought a little fish and they want to protect it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so how do I do this in a manner where that isn't necessary and this is it? All right, next we're gonna set up our water mixing bin. This is really important because uh, we're actually gonna to try to get the exact same water in this tank as in the mixing bin uh, for our big water changes so that it's stable and the exact same. So in that case, most people will use a brute trash can and if you can get a 55 gallon one for paired to your 10 gallon tank, it's actually perfect because that's enough water to actually fill this thing all the way up once and then do four and a half water changes as well. And we only need to do four water changes through this entire thing in most cases. So that's enough water in one bin. It's all the same, which is inherently stable. So just like a display tank, stability is key. Um, temperature, salinity, copper level, we all want those to be the same all the time. Uh, the reason we're doing such big water changes is not just because the fish is you know, building up ammonia in there, but it's all the unmeasurables, you know, stress hormone, bad bacteria in the water. Uh, when we do water changes, we're actually gonna be scrubbing the surfaces down. So we're gonna be removing the bad bacteria actually growing on the surfaces inside the tank. Um, and it's actually gonna help the fish get through um, quarantine and actually handle the medications a lot better. So it uh, technically, I guess, would be easier if I just uh, raised up the copper level in there and left it alone. Maybe I had uh, my biological filter. But there's also a lot of people out there that say, I do that and it just didn't work out for me and I killed some fish. So this is about getting past many of those unknowns. I just don't need to worry about them because we're exporting all that bacteria, all the stress hormone, all the garbage. We're just getting it out of the tank and we're replacing it with fresh water that has identical parameters in here. And it might not have sounded stable at first to do 100% water changes, but done this way, it is. All right, salt mix, which brand and to what level? Uh, a sneak peek, we're gonna use Instant Ocean Purple Box because the levels are actually lower. Uh, we're gonna mix it up to your normal level of what, 1.025 or 35 parts per thousand. And a lot of this is because what's good in a reef tank may actually hinder some of the process in the QT. So explain why. All right, so unlike in a reef tank where high parameters is actually a good thing, uh, in a QT it will actually mess with some medications. Uh, that's why we're gonna be using the Purple Box. We want just as close to just pure salt as possible. Um, the reason why is medications like copper. Um, sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed, but like when you mix a really high quality reef salt, sometimes you get a lot of precipitants. Um, same reason we don't use calcium carbonate or live sand uh, in a QT. Same thing with that precipitant, copper will actually bind to it, which will cause the concentrations of medication to fluctuate, uh, which is not good for QT because we want to maintain a really stable therapeutic level. All right, so uh, some people have heard of hypo, which means running the salinity really low. Why wouldn't we do that in this case? All right, so the lower the salinity, the actually more toxic copper becomes. Um, and it's a lot of math and a lot of trying to figure out if you're gonna be doing hypo with copper. So we just don't recommend it in general. All right, so that leads into the fact that we're gonna put some of that copper power into the bin uh, and uh, that copper is actually gonna make it into the uh, uh, QT tank as well. Uh, but what are we going to use to test for copper and to what level? All right, so a HANA checker is going to be the tool. It's digital, super easy to use, just like any of the other test kits that you might have used. Same thing, little powder packets. Uh, marine collectors, we actually do test three times before we use the uh, medicated water just to make sure that the level is where we want it to be. Um, there's going to be mild amounts of variances, but we do want to make sure that it's above therapeutic. Um, therapeutic does start at 1.5. A lot of people will recommend two, but we're actually going to be recommending 2.5 for most fish. Uh, reason why is that we want to get these fish in, we want to get them treated, and we want to get them out. We don't want to have any chance of reinfection. 
Yeah, and so do you actually run a little higher at marine collectors sometimes? Yeah, so <laughs> chelated copper sulfate, it's actually very forgiving. Um, it's a lot safer to use than ionic copper at marine collectors. We'll run at 2.65, um, sometimes even a little bit higher than that, depending on what we have in the systems. Um, also, sometimes a little bit lower than that, just depending on you know what type of fish we have. So safe for you guys is uh, 2.5, and note that this uh, type of copper for this is not optional. It is called copper power. You use that one and that one only for uh, this QT because the other ones uh, can be different and you would harm the fish at those levels. All right, so we got all the water mixed up, everything ready to go, we got it in the tank. But before we put the first fish in, what we need to do is actually a three minute freshwater fluke bath. Uh, and we're gonna try to get some of those flukes off for a pretty good reason. All right, so what we're doing here is we're basically trying to check to see if the fish has flukes. Um, most fish do, it's not always detrimental to the fish, but if you're gonna to decide to treat for them, uh, you should definitely know at least if you have to or not. Um, basically what this looks like is we're gonna do a three minute freshwater bath. Our GI water is usually fine. Uh, we're gonna put the fish in there for three minutes. If the fish has body flukes, you'll actually see these little oval shaped flakes start to appear white on the fish. Um, you can actually use a turkey baster to blast them off. Um, that's actually a really good tool to do anyways while you're dipping fish. Um, if it's got gill flukes or flukes around the mouth, what you'll see is the fish is actually gonna start coughing or twitching its head a lot. Um, that's a good indication that that fish does have, um, you know, flukes in the gills or around the mouth. Um, and then what we're gonna do after that is actually an interim bath. What I like to do is do like half fresh, half salt water for another three to five minutes. Um, what this is gonna do is allow that fish a little bit um, of a jumping off period instead of going from fresh water directly back to salt water, we're gonna do it a little halfway in between so it's not as stressful. So it's important to note, we're not actually treating for flukes in this case. What we're doing is this is just the best time to see them actually fall off so that we know that we should treat for them in the future. It also isn't 100% definitive. Just because you don't see any doesn't mean they're not in there. But if you do see them, you should probably do something about it. It's a three minute heated freshwater dip followed by 50-50 fresh water and tank water for another three or so minutes mm -hmm. and then put them back in the tank. Look at what's in the bin and you'll know. All right, one step left before we add the fish to the QT tank, we're actually gonna turn the water yellow. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be medicating the bin that we're mixing all the water in with copper, but we're gonna be dosing the actual QT tank after that with nitrofurazone uh, or furan 2 that's the over-the-counter product. Um, it's made by API, you can find it at most fish stores, Petco's. Um, but basically what we're doing here is nitrofurazone, it's an antimicrobial. Um, and what we're looking to do is prevent bacterial gill infections, copper, it's a gill irritant. Um, and if you can imagine a fish that is sitting in a box of water that is exposed to, you know, bacteria that's constantly building up and it's got gills that are being, you know, mildly affected by the copper, uh, we just want to put that in there so that they're not getting infected as well. So that's a big point here is that copper is looked at as something that stresses the fish, right, and can cause mortalities. But what we're gonna do is counter that uh, by using the Furian 2 or the nitrofurazone. Uh, what you're looking for is with the Furian 2, I would just follow the directions that are on the package. But with nitrofurazone, how much should you use? Uh, so we're gonna be looking at 10 to 30 milligrams per gallon of water. Um, nitrofurazone, it's actually really hard to overdose it, but that doesn't mean just blindly dump it in there. Um, definitely get yourself like a little gram scale just to make sure that you're doing the right amount. Um, Typically speaking, you know, in the industry, it's common that we want to do it every 48 hours and do a 50% water change before. But since we're changing so much water and this is not for the treatment of any type of bacterial infection, um, it's just preventative for gill infections. Um, every three days should be more than adequate. So at this point, you can actually add your fish. I would maybe double check the salinity, the copper level and uh, the temperature, but put the fish in and then we wait three days until the next step. All right, so it's been three days. What's next? All right, so now we're going to do our first 100% water change. Uh, the idea is going to be that we want to make this tank as clean as possible, almost like it's new again. Uh, we're going to take that fish out. A uh, little specimen container works just fine. It's not going to take very long. You know, once you get the tricks down, maybe 10 minutes to do this entire thing. Uh, I like to take a sponge, just wipe down the inside. Uh, I will wipe down the PVC hides, the heaters, the airline, um, drain it down. You can take a paper towel, you can wipe down the inside, or if you really want to be thorough about it, you can even rinse it out like in your uh, laundry sink type of thing. Um, fill it back up, put the fish back in, uh, we'll redose the nitrofurazone, zone, call it a day. All right, so that's the actual process, it takes about 10 minutes, and the good news is you only have to do it three more times, which means uh, if you can do 
four 10 minute uh, processes uh, over the course of uh, uh, 15 days, you can actually be ick and velvet free or that fish can anyway. However, there is one little step right at the end, day 15. All right, so uh, this is more just a personal trick that I like to do. Um, once that fish is done, you know, you've pretty much done the work, the fish is clean. Um, before you put that fish into your display tank, what I like to do is just put that fish into clean water. Basically, we're gonna rinse the fish um, so that we can get all that medicated quarantine water off. What that's gonna do is one, you know, you're not gonna put potentially medicated water into your reef tank, but also any potential parasites that are still free swimming in that water that have been uh, prevented by the medications from actually reattaching to the fish, you're pretty much gonna rinse those off the fish before they go into the display tank. All right, there are stipulations or uh, caveats to everything, and this one has a couple that are pretty obvious. So when isn't it 14 days, when is it more? Yeah, so just like what we do at Marine Collectors, we call it 14 day clean. Uh, we want consecutive 14 days of the fish being symptom free. So let's just say you put a fish into the QT tank, right? It's day eight and you're like, oh my God, look at that fish. It's got spots on it, you know, it's got ick. Uh, restart the clock and that 14 day clock will start from the last day that you saw symptoms and then it's been clean for consecutive 14 days. So there are some caveats to it and there's a little difference between uh, seeing a fish in here that's showing no signs of it which is 14 days and if it's actually visibly sick a little bit longer. All right, the second stipulation, remember some of those fish that we said actually appreciate being ramped up slowly uh, to the copper level and that they might actually appreciate a lower copper level. In this case, we're gonna recommend a 2.0 for them and uh, you can explain how we're gonna get there. All right, so fish that we're gonna do this with, they're gonna be flasher wrasses, fairy wrasses, um, actually most wrasses in general, sometimes halicories, it's a good one to do. Uh, Antheus, angelfish, sometimes don't handle copper that well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the actual QT water at 1.0. Um, before you put the fish in there, you know, start off with maybe quarter dose, half dose, um, to see what it'll come to. Um, then progressively every day you're going to move it about 0.25. Um, if the fish is really expensive or you know specifically that fish might be a little more, more on the sensitive side, um, you can take up to a week to do it. Um, you know, you're not going to hurt the fish by doing longer, um, just as long as it's not actively having an outbreak of something. Um, but basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to ramp up that concentration of medications to a therapeutic level um, that we can be sure is going to actually eradicate what's on there. So a couple of big changes there is uh, this guy right here, the directions are designed to get you to 2.5. Uh, now you could just try to figure that math out to get down to 1.0, but I actually suggest like he did, going down to a quarter of the dose just to see where that gets you. Cause it will give you an idea of how I would, how much I need to go up a quarter of a, a point every single time. Uh, and the other change here is normally we would have done that first water change on day three. In this case, we're going to do it on day four. So uh, we're going to start off uh, with one, 1.25, 1.5, 1 1.75. And then on that final day, when we do the water change, we're actually going to have our bin at 2.0. And that will be the final increase. Again, giving you time to watch how they actually behave with some of these more sensitive fish. All right, so we could stop here, velvet. It handled, no problem. Uh, but we're actually gonna go into phase two, which is uranema and brook. And then after that, phase three, which is those flukes we talked about, all found in the playlist right here.